it's Lace. Today, I thought it'd be interesting to show my entire illustration process using Clip Studio Paint on my iPad. In my last video, you could see a bit of it, but now I'll go more in depth on my thought process during each step and decision instead of just showing me drawing. Also, I'm very happy to say that this video is, once again, kindly sponsored by Clip Studio. As usual, I only talk about things I genuinely like and recommend, so you can trust that I'm being honest in my videos. I have actually been using their app almost exclusively for the past months, as I've been getting more into digital art and digital painting. And the reason for that, I'd say, is mostly because the way the brushes interact with each other, with the blending being really smooth and mimicking traditional painting really nicely, is really in my up in my alley. <laughs> Another reason is that I'd like to get comfortable with computer drawing softwares because I plan on moving on to a drawing tablet in the future so I can use my computer to draw and benefit from the keyboard shortcuts. I'll definitely miss the touch screen from my iPad which I'm currently very used to but I'm hoping that learning the shortcuts will make up for it. So, the first thing I usually do when making bigger slash more important illustrations, like for work or commissions, is I'll start with a couple sketches to warm up and then proceed to making a few thumbnails and getting out some ideas from my head. Spoiler alert, <laughs> my process is a complete mess, so try to bear with me here. So I had in mind a little theme for what I wanted, which was sweet. Um, it was a pretty open theme, so I tried playing around with that concept and looked up some images on Pinterest to get my brain years going and to pick up a few interesting ideas. After that, I select the one I like the most and start working on it more carefully. In this case was this girly with the twin buns. It was looking really cute. <laughs> I wasn't sure of whether to make a full body or a headshot illustration, so I went with kind of a mixture of both. So an illustration that would look good close up, but also have more to it once you zoom it out. Also, <laughs> because I almost never draw full bodies in my videos, so I thought it could be helpful to watch that process as well. Another spoiler alert, how I draw bodies is also a mess. <laughs> I couldn't decide on what I wanted the body to be doing, since it started off as a simple headshot, which means I had no plans of drawing anything other than a head, so I tried a lot of different poses and angles until I finally found one I liked. I also struggled quite a bit with the perspective, but I wanted a fun angle, so I pushed through and managed to get a cool pose. What helped me get a cool pose was going back to like the basics, so drawing boxes in perspective. So I put my character in a box and made it so that she looked like she was in the box, so that the perspective would look slightly more correct. And that helps a lot, so don't feel like you're losing something when you like go back to the basics, like drawing the box bodies and stuff like that. If it helps you get the final product, then it's okay. There's no shame to it. Usually when I struggle this much with trying to match a head to a body, I'll start over drawing the head and body at the same time, other than finishing a head sketch and then making a body for it. It's just easier to start over, but I really liked the face, so I wanted to preserve it. After the sketch is mostly defined, I make a decision to either make clean line art or not. If I'm gonna be painting over the lines, usually I try to make the sketch clean enough that I don't need line art over it. It depends entirely on what type of finish I want for that specific illustration. So do I want it to have apparent line art or do I want it to be more of a painting? In this case, I wanted a more painterly look with some like colorful line art accents and I just add those in the end so I don't feel the need to have a clean line art to proceed. The sketch was a bit messy though so I made a cleaner sketchy <laughs> line art on top of it to have a better idea of what to paint over it. So then, I go on with coloring. My process changes a bit depending on what I've learned recently, 
actually it can change a lot. So I just found out about the lasso fill tool. I know I'm late. <laughs> and blocking the entire silhouette first to then go over it with a clip layer which makes the process a lot less messy and the shapes get to stay sharp. I also like to see the full silhouette of the character on its own if it looks interesting and if it has cool shapes. Um, I might make alterations on the silhouette and then adjust the lines afterwards like I did here really, <laughs> really small scale. Um, the brain functions differently when thinking about lines and blob shapes, so using both to create might unlock new solutions you wouldn't have thought of. I also like to make the lines colorful by clipping a new layer to the line art layer and throwing around fun colors. Even if they don't show up in the end, I honestly never know if they will or not, so I like to make them fun just in case. This is the color blocking part, separating each part of your drawing by laying down the base colors first. I get a lot of questions about how I choose my colors, so I'll try to explain it in the best way I can, because it's mostly pretty intuitive. First of all, where is this? What's around the character? What lighting are they under? You can clearly see that it didn't specify any of these things, as the background is just a flat yellow color. That gives me freedom to do whatever I want. So I decided I wanted this to be a warm, summery image from the beginning, with cute bright colors and bright lighting. After that, the way I choose the actual colors is very much intuitive, but very dependent on each other. Like, after the skin color has been picked, the other colors will be picked out based on that skin tone. So taking that into consideration, I play with the saturation and value of the colors of the hair and bodysuit so that they match each other and making sure they don't clash, which would bring attention to the wrong areas. Making the colors dependent on each other makes the whole illustration more cohesive and nicer to look at because there is a harmony to it and our eyes like that. I want the face and body language to be the focus, so having for example a highly saturated hair or bodysuit would take attention away from that. Adding different colors to areas you want attention on is a good way to do that without it clashing with the other elements of the illustration. The strawberry earrings play that role here, and also because I really like fruit earrings, they're really cute, so I wanted to add them in somehow. After all those base colors have been laid down, I get to blocking the shadows with the multiply layer. This part is pretty simple. Anything that the main light source isn't directly touching is a shadow. I picked a colder color for the shadows by varying the hue of the multiply layer because having a contrast of cold and warm for your lights and shadows makes illustrations more interesting to look at. And that's also what happens in real life if you stop to analyze anything that's being hit by a light and there's a shadow, there's always one of those colors will always be warmer or colder than the other. In this case, I wanted the shadows to be the cold and the light areas to be the warm, so I did that. <laughs> I also added a little light on the tip of her nose to create contrast on her face, which is another way to draw attention to areas. Paying attention to this is very important to also avoid attention in areas you don't want it. So high contrast equals more attention, low contrast equals less attention. Think black and white versus gray and white, for example. One pair clearly draws more attention than the other. Then I start adding occlusions, which are the areas with basically no light, or I'll start the rendering process and adding occlusions while I render, which is polishing everything and adding those bouncing lights, again keeping in mind her surroundings. From this part on I'll just paint on top of everything, including the lines. I decided the bouncing lights would be yellow to reflect the background. Bouncing lights are basically the lights that interact with the shadow areas because they're not strong enough to even compete with the bright sunlight. They're literally the light that bounces slash reflects from other surfaces. In the rendering process, I'll also play around with lighten and darken layers to either take off or add contrast to certain areas of the drawing. I tend to get too caught up on the face and adding too many darks recklessly only to zoom out and see that I went a bit overboard. So thinking of the illustration as a full thing is extremely important to making it balanced to the eye of the viewer. 
So I zoom out a lot. <laughs> I'm sure you can notice that. And the small view window is one of the most useful things in my process. Using a black and white layer is also very helpful when you want to check out the values in your piece. My way of seeing if it's good or not is comparing it to a figurine. <laughs> I look at the low view window and think to myself, does it look like an android? Lighting wise, of course. So look up pictures of figurines to know what I'm talking about and analyze the way that the lights and shadows interact with the object. This could be any object to be honest, but figurines have human shapes and it's easier to compare my human drawings to. Thinking like that helps me a lot and also looking at real life reference pictures, especially when painting dark skin. So for that, Pinterest is my best friend. After I'm satisfied with the rendering and overall values, I'll start getting creative with the finishing touches like adding bright lines or fun colors on shadow areas to add color variation. It makes the painting look more fun to me. And these are the finishing touches, honestly. I wanted to add a little side note to this video about the many parts that were cut out to reassure you that I did struggle with the painting process more than it looks like I did. So in my process, I try things out all the time and sometimes they don't look right. The rendering part of this illustration for example, I tried three different finishing styles. One with more defined lines, one with smoother blending and the one you see in the finished product. I didn't show those other two failed attempts, or whatever you want to call them, because then this video would be 40 to 50 minutes long, and it's not a relevant part of the process to understand the final product as a viewer. The reason I'm saying this is because people tend to idolize their favorite artists, thinking their process is smooth, that they don't struggle, they finish everything in two hours, they make no mistakes. That is absolutely not true for most artists. I don't want you to watch this video and compare yourself in a negative way, only in an effective, observing, and kind to yourself way. Like, what can I learn from this instead of why am I not like this? I do that all the time when seeing final products of artists I admire and I have this illusion in my head that they're perfect, they have everything figured out, every solution just comes to them easily, even though I know that's not true. I didn't show some parts because they're not essential to the viewers, but they were to me to be able to get to the final product. So embrace your own failures too, because at least you tried something and knowing it didn't work allowed you to create something better. I know some of you consider me an inspiration and for that I'm incredibly grateful, so that's why I'm saying this. Don't be afraid to take too long in a drawing or try new finishes, line styles, Every artist you admire tried it for the first time once too, so it's okay. And well, I think this covers pretty much every step of my process. Of course it varies depending on what kind of finish I want, but the basic principles I think stay the same for a while. I'm still learning a lot too, so I expect a lot of things about my process to change. Keep that in mind when watching this video. This is how I usually draw in March of 2021. In a couple of months, it probably will not be the same way, and that's just how it is, we evolve. I imagine you might have a few questions about things I said here, so I'll try to reply to as many comments as I can. So leave your questions down below. Let me know if you liked this video and if it was helpful to you in any way, I really hope it was. And also thank you once again to Clip Studio for another great sponsorship. I really like your drawing software, it's all that I use. So yeah, I guess I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!